So I'm headed out to do a little mountain biking and the first time that I came out here this year uh, it was about a week ago and there were some really cool little wildflowers popping up everywhere and I decided that I was going to put my pack on with the Hasselblad and uh, take some macro pictures. Oh my goodness, what is going on YouTube? Um, I am so grateful to be back making videos again. I was down and out with uh, COVID for a couple weeks. Um, really kind of took the wind out of my sails, but I am out here in nature and it is just a perfect, beautiful day um, to try and do some photography. I'm about five miles in to a 10 mile uh, loop out here in the, the wilderness in Wisconsin and I've got this huge pack with all my camera gear and you know you're about five miles in and I realize I, I don't have a water bottle <laughs> I'm like all right we can do this we can do this so life is good man life is good like I said I came out here about uh, a week ago uh, for the first time this year and decided that I wanted to get uh, get a little bit of exercise. My family and I have been sick with COVID and it, it's just been a couple weeks and it's just been kind of lingering on in, in my chest and stuff. And I came out here and, and took a, a nice bike ride and it it really it really started the the real recovery and healing process for me. Um, I think a lot of times you forget how how healing nature can can be so when you're out here in the middle of nowhere it's uh i don't know it's just it's just good to connect and uh get back back to nature so feeling a lot better uh that's why i haven't made that many videos recently but anyway when i was riding i noticed that the, the little wildflowers were just starting to pop up and i i decided you know what i got these extension tubes uh, for my Hasselblad, I have the what is this? The 55. Yep, the 55 and a 21. And so I, I've, I've shot a little bit of macro photography with these, but not a ton. And you know, I decided that I would I would take my pack and take my bike and ride it out here. Now, of course, I'm about five, it's, it's like a 10 mile loop and it's it's pretty technical and pretty cool. Um, there's some really, really, you know, some pretty steep hills that I didn't realize. I gotta go home, when I go home and weigh, weigh my backpack, but there's some hills that I normally can fly up and I've had to walk up them. So <laughs> it, it definitely makes a difference mountain biking with all this gear, but it's it's been pretty fun. And then of course my chest is still a little bit tight from good old vid, but, uh, yeah, I've been uh, managing, but so I decided I wanted to, to come out here and, and shoot some macro shots of these, you know, early spring wildflowers. And when I was riding around last time, I was, I was kind of like visual. I'm like, oh yeah, that would be, that'd be really cool to, to shoot some of this stuff on film. And I, it's, I, I started just questioning myself. Why would I, why do I always say, or why do I always go to, okay, I'd really like to shoot that on film when I could just as easily, you know, shoot these on, on you know, I have some very nice digital cameras and it just never, never crosses my mind to take the time and shoot something for myself necessarily on digital. You know, occasionally I will with my, you know, take pictures of my daughter or the family and things like that. But, and it, you know, a lot of it just goes back to, you know, wanting to work in the darkroom with them because before I even, it was like the, the same thought going on in my head was, I bet you some macro shots of these wildflowers on Fomatone developed in uh, an Agfa, or not Agfa, Ilford, like warm tone developer. I, I just started like visualizing the tones in the, in the, in the fiber-based paper. 
and so I, you know, again, that that's really what what brings it back to me is that I I kind of visualize what these are going to look like, and I I know I want to go in the darkroom and and print them on on that beautiful paper, and so that's really what you know. I go through all the the hassle of you know working with this camera and you know, having to go through and develop the film, and, and it's 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 not an easy process by any means, but you know anything. Anything that's just because it's difficult doesn't mean that it's not worth doing. And I just watched that in another video, I believe, by Tim Hall, and and I liked that. Um, he said that, and I think he quoted somebody else that that said that. And it's just because it's difficult, it doesn't mean it's not worth doing. So anyway, that's what that's what I'm out here doing. So I'm going to try and take some macro shots of the wildflowers and get some exercise, get my lungs hopefully back to full capacity at some point here, and. You know, I, and also I just, I encourage anybody that's going through a tough time because, you know, being cooped up, locked up, laid up, and just, just feeling downright shitty, or just, just feeling downright crappy, you know, you, you get in your head too, so this anxiety and this, you know, depression can keep, kind of creep up on you. And so I encourage anybody that's, that's struggling to, to, you know, maybe try, try getting out in nature and getting back to, uh, you know, something a little bit more simple and, and just enjoying enjoying nature because it I, I really do think that that was a turning point for me when I took that that bike ride and I well not only that it, it got me a little bit inspired to come out here today and so you know it was a combination combination of things and it could have just been the right time but anyway it's made me feel a lot better so I would encourage you to get some exercise get out in nature um, but hopefully everybody's doing well out there and and, and uh, yeah so let me see if I can get some of these wildflowers shot. I came out originally and it was, I looked at the, the forecast and I was gonna get up like super early. Of course, it, the, my weather app said like one mile an hour wind, one to three mile an hour wind. Well, it, it's pretty, it's not like windy, but all the little flowers are moving around. So I don't know how well this is gonna work like anything else and but we're, we're, we're gonna give it a try. And then of course too, cause I've, I'm, like I said, I'm still kind of recovering. I, uh, my alarm went off at like 5.30 and the, no, no way. It's, I don't even want to tell you what time I actually got out here at, but it, it's like full sun and you now we're gonna see what we can do. So, all right, let's, let's go do this. So my initial thoughts were to shoot uh, like FP4. But it is a little bit on the windy side, so we're gonna go with uh, HP5, um, so I can raise the shutter speeds up just a little bit. Uh, go ahead and get that loaded in. Is this called an incident incident light meter? Yeah, that's what it's called. So, it looks like 5, 6 at 250th of a second. And I I think I'll use like 5, 6. I might even open all the way up to F4, depending. I kind of want to get that really, really shallow depth of field and just the focus on the, I don't even know what they're called. I'm going to have to look it up. The little... The things that catch the, the things that have the pollen. Um, <laughs> but I'll probably take one that way and then take one uh, stop down a bit. But like I said, because the wind's kind of not cooperating as much as I would like it to, we'll have to see. This prism does have a, a meter built in too, so I can always kind of double check, you know, what the reflective, it's a pretty good meter too, so. Um, right there.
So I'm kind of down in a, a little bit of a valley and so I'm hoping that the of course it looked like it was still and of course as soon as I get everything set up the flowers start blowing around that's pretty pretty typical and I am shooting this with the 55 extension tube on the macro one I think it's a 110 macro planner it's the 120 uh, f4 120 macro planner um, so that is what I'm using for a majority of these I do have a uh, two other lenses with but depending on what goes down here I may or may not try and shoot them that look good so I also brought this little foldable reflector with and I'm just like at the edge of the frame there was a little bit of, of sun, so I'm trying to kind of wrap it around and just block that down to save me some trouble in the darkroom. So I want the sun to hit the flowers, but not the edge of the frame is the idea. So I'm gonna have to kind of do this backwards. So what, so what I have going on is the sun is hitting the flower that I want but then I'm blocking the sun from the, the background. And it's kind of a balancing act, but hopefully I can get it just right. But now I have the, the two extension tubes that I have stacked on top of each other. I'm trying to get in really close. And, oh, that looks good. But of course, the depth of field gets shallower and shallower. And any of that movement is gonna get picked up even more. So, you just have to be very patient. And wait on the wind. But I suppose I could take another meter reading. The other thing that's not helping is the sun is coming around on me. So like now, it just, yeah, it just got way brighter, which maybe, if it looks good, might actually be a blessing. So I can go to 250 at 5.6. Yeah, and I got a little bit of a weird lighting pattern on it, but... shot so now because it's um, midday here because I got such a late start the light was getting really really dappled down here so before I was using the reflector to kind of cut some of the Sun on the edge of the frame um, from these out but now I'm just blocking this and putting this in full shade I did a couple where there was hard light on it and but for these not next one i'm just i just have like one or two frames left i'm just going to shoot these um and there goes that wind again oh no well i'll have to get that um yeah because so you can see how the light's kind of hard so i did shoot some like that and now i'm going to shoot some with the trusty reflector and this is a I don't know, I use it for portraits and stuff, but it folds up, it's a small one and it folds up really, really good. And I can, I can just slide it in the uh, computer part of my backpack. So it's nice to have, you can always throw, use it to throw light on stuff. You know, so if I wanted to put more of a highlight, I could, I could actually, if this was in the shade, I could actually take that reflector and, uh, you know, prop it up and bounce, bounce some light back in here. But for this, we're just gonna use it as a, as a scrim as they call it, or something to block light. Oh, that looks really pretty. Okay. I just love the way things look <laughs> on the ground glass through a macro lens. Um, but I wanted to do five, six. I'm shooting all these pretty narrow, but I really like the look. But it's a little on the risky side because of the wind. But the reflector's helping block the wind a little bit too, so 
Uh, every time I go to click this, the wind picks up. It's driving me bonkers. All right, here we go. There we go. There's the exposure. So that is going to wrap it up for this video. Um, it was just really nice to get out in nature, take a bike ride, combine two of my, um, you know, two things that I love, actually three things, getting out in nature, bike riding, and photography. So um, it was a little windier than I would have liked it have been. It's definitely not the time of day I normally would come out here to do this, but you know, I did it nonetheless. And so hopefully some of these in, you know, like I said, blocking the light, like like I did can kind of give you that soft light look and then I got some hard light too so it, it's good to try new things as well so I'm gonna get these in the dark room and hopefully if, if they turned out good I can make a video of me um, printing these on that FOMA paper I talked about with that developer I talked about and um, make something um, really beautiful in the dark room with these so till next time guys um, if you like this please hit the subscribe hit the thumbs up Leave me a comment down below and we'll see you next time. Two cameras, five lenses, two light meters, about eight rolls of film, two tripods, but no water. Whew, priorities.